Hello, I'm Chris, and this is Otis Buggy Works, and this will be the first episode of the assembly series on my first buggy design, the XOT1. X for experimental, because still figuring out things. So, before I start diving into the front towards the back, I'll kind of give a little bit of a backstory on this. I've went through multiple different buggy builds in the past of just uh, air-cooled Volkswagen stuff. I got started getting into the cross-cart stuff, building other people's designs, and got to a point where I was like, you know what, I really want to start designing my own just for the sake of just learning it. And um, this is my first design, and it was probably built backwards in the way you would normally want to design and build chassis because I built this completely from an image in my head and then just start building and then realizing, you know what, it would be a little more efficient if I probably had designed this whole thing in computer software before build, building the whole thing. But here we are. Here it is. We're just going to move on with it. You learn, you move on. So what I was thinking when I was first kind of imagining this in my head was I wanted a smaller buggy that was kind of like the uh, Honda Odyssey, Honda, Honda Pilots from the 80s. I liked how small they were, they were robust, um, but I've owned a couple of those and you just, you can't find parts for them and it's just kind of a pain in the butt. And I wanted something a little bit more modernized where I can be able to swap out uh, different modern or available parts. And I wanted to kind of blend the old Honda Odyssey with more newer cross cart stuff where I could use motorcycle engines or snowmobile engines or different layouts of suspension design. And that's kind of where I got to the point where uh, this was in my head. And um, I just started building it. So we'll start from the front end and move our way back. Uh, this is just the first episode of just going over the chassis. We'll do other components uh, in further episodes and we'll, we'll assemble this together and I'll explain every single little, little part of it and how I was, what my plans were to design it. So starting off the front, I had noticed that a lot of cross carts had a kind of a similar profile of a kind of a flat nose going from the um, windshield area and then going on a flat plane down to the nose. And I like it, but I want to do something a little different. And I really, really wanted to do something that was a kind of a round nose, like kind of a quarter of a sphere. And I had I built that whole thing out. And I had a bunch of rolled tubes in there, and it, I thought it would look good. I got the whole thing built, and I looked at it, and I absolutely hated it. And I cut it all apart and went with more of uh, a bull nose look. So there's just enough room inside this tunnel for uh, a driver of my size, about 5'9". And I kind of planned that I'm at kind of an average height for most guys, and this is pretty much going to be built around the average height driver. Um, the controls and seat can be moved around for, for shorter people, for kids, which was another thing I was designing intent was for my, my kids to be able to drive this. So I wanted something also very robust. Once I started building the whole chassis, I started realizing that there, this, this leg tunnel is very, very tight. And it made things very challenging as far as putting in your brake pedal, your throttle pedal, and still having all of the exterior space for the suspension and shock mounts. One thing about the front end, because this is kind of a uh, prototype, is probably the next thing I'm going to do when I start making revisions to this, is fix this, this shock tower where I wanted to get it tied down into the chassis so that these tubes cannot be pushed up and bent. But that's something that will get fixed and I'll, I'll uh, make a revision to the to the design because I've already got this all drawn up on the computer so I can always make revisions now. Moving a little bit back, um, the, the actual safety cell of the area kind of follows a similar pattern where the chassis is built off of a flat frame, uh, a hip bar which wraps around the whole entire vehicle is used, and then you have your normal roll bar in the back which kind of acts as also a firewall if you were to panel this up, and then you have your your A pillar, your windshield area, which I could always put in plexiglass windshield or some sort of net 
or shield to, prevent, to keep the driver's arms inside the vehicle in case of a roll. Um, going on to the back, um, one thing I definitely wanted to do on the back end was you see a lot of different carts have very square back areas and that's because the shocks are mounted on the upper arms which makes the shock points very very high and I did something a little different with the suspension to keep this low because I, I kind of just out of aesthetic reasons I wanted to kind of kind of a slant back design uh, so you'll see you'll see those those uh, suspension components we get to a later video um, but I, I, I overall I like how it turned out where it came out with a slant back um, it still gave me plenty of room inside the engine bay uh, if I wanted to mount a fuel cell here I could but with this this design and this uh, power source, I was able to put the fuel tank down here. Now on the power source, um, I'll go ahead and spoil it. I didn't do anything special. I just used a Harbor Freight uh, 459 um, Predator engine. And would that fit into here? Um, kind of another thing with the design of this car was I wanted to keep the engine bay a little roomy so if I wanted to put a little more power in here, I had the room to do so. So I never really intended this, this chassis to ever be more than a, I'm gonna say 50 to 60 horsepower. Like it, I want this some kind of buggy to be more of a backyard uh, play toy with, with some aggressive styling. So this is nothing that's, the chassis is nothing that's anything compliant with any safety regulations. It's just built off my own uh, experience um, welding and fabricating in the industry. So, uh, but the engine bay is room large enough that I could put some, I could probably put a, a small V-twin in there, like some of the Predator V-twins. Um, I kind of plan on the next build to do a snowmobile engine. I've got a uh, three-cylinder Suzuki snowmobile engine in here that I could fit in here. Uh, it might get a little tight with that because I have to do the expansion chambers for a two-stroke engine. And, um, the belt drive is going to get a little goofy. Um, and then going on to the back end, you notice that there's a whole bunch of stuff missing here. It's all kind of like an empty corner. And that was one design intent I wanted is that I wanted the rear end to be like a sub assembly that you could just drop it out by unbolting a few things. If you ever had to do any kind of serious work to it, it would be just nice to kind of drop it away. Um, but I wanted that kind of divorce from the whole chassis. Um, which is not something I, I see a whole lot in different other designs, but that's something I wanted to do. Um, the whole chassis was built off of BRW tubing, which is technically, it's a little bit less quality than DOM, but again, the design intent was to keep this more of an affordable and more of a backyard play toy. So ERW was plenty strong as long as you put all of the weld seams of the tubing on the inside radiuses of every single bend. You're, you're pretty much, it's pretty much kosher thing to do. Um, so the whole chassis was built off of um, inch and a quarter ERW with a 120 wall. And I know that's, that wall thickness is a bit heavy duty and it kind of makes this whole chassis a little hefty, but I got the tubing on a good price and I just went with it. I figured with, with the heavier chassis only having around 20 horsepower, this thing is gonna be pretty robust and it's no performer. It's gonna be something that's gonna be safe, that's something I could let my kids into it and uh, not have to worry about it. The only other size of tube that's in this chassis are some of these um, supporting members that brace up it and those are all one inch. Also ERW 120 wall. I think when I go to build the next chassis, probably what I'll do is I'll probably go to an inch and a half tube because I think at that point, you get a larger chassis, you kind of need to go up on that diameter uh, just for extra rigidity to, to the frame. So the seat is mounted on a platform here so I can use it as a slider to, for adjust for different drivers. And this, this build, the controls are not adjustable, so it's just the seat for different height drivers. The engine bay, uh, there are two tubes running parallel to each other, but also perpendicular to the center line of the car and those parallel bars allows me to design different engine mounts that can just act as an engine cradle and mount right onto uh, those parallel tubes so whenever I go to build this for different engines 
all I have to do is make an engine crater for it, and it'll set right on those tubes. And that is about it that I can think of, because I don't want to start teasing away. I don't want to tell too much because I gotta, I gotta, I gotta keep this all categorized into different areas. So the next episode we'll do we'll do all suspension components, front and rear, and that will include upper and lower arms, shocks, spindles, and knuckles. And as we go along with it, you'll slowly get to see the car completed, um, kind of as if I'm building it, but it's already built. Um, just random side note, I got a tarp wall behind me as a backdrop, kind of weird, but that's actually my paint booth. So as I've been getting all these parts done, I've been painting them in here where it's a nice heated environment, um, and then bringing them out and assembling the car. So once I get all the parts painted, I'll tear this down and actually have my full space in my shop back available. So uh, that's about it for today. I'll see you on the second episode.